Dustin Dominguez and Hayden Gillum are going to go at it here. Interestingly, number 68 and number 69, HSBK Racing's Dustin Dominguez, TLBC Racing's Hayden Gillum. It's all on the line here. They've raced all year long to get to this point. The man with a seven point deficit coming into today. He knows what he has got to do. He has got to win this race. That's all. Dustin Dominguez knows this is a race that is a must win situation. Even if he wins and Hayden Gillum finishes in the second spot, Gillum is still going to win the national championship. So not only does Dustin Dominguez have to win the race, but he's got to hope for a rider or two to get in between the two of them. HSBK, Houston Superbike team, a top team running Yamahas up against the TOBC Suzuki's. This is what championship motorcycle racing is all about. Let's go down trackside. He's our pole setter in a must win situation. Christy Lee has Dustin Dominguez. Got a great look at the turn one coming down into this race. What are you thinking going into it? Yeah, you know, uh, we only got one option here, and it's to win, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my head down and uh, ride my best, and just, you know, hopefully the championship settles, but uh, all I can do is win, but uh, I just got to say hello to everyone back home, and everybody just got out of church watching at First Christian Church, what's up, and uh, all my family, uh, my dad, my mom, everybody that supported me and uh, the whole Houston Superbikes team for giving me this opportunity. And uh, definitely gonna be riding for uh, Eric Sanchez today. He was a good buddy of mine and uh, lost his life doing what he loved, but uh, we won't forget him. Thank you, Dustin, best of luck. We're gonna move over to number 69, Hayden Gillum, very quick, sitting second right now, but first still in the championship. You increased the points deficit yesterday with a win. Any thoughts before we start this race? Uh, only thoughts are I just got to get a good start and, you know, put my head down and go as fast as I possibly can. Uh, other than that, it's really not in my hands, so I'm just going to go do my best on the bike that my crew's given me, and I'm really looking forward to it. Number 69, Hayden Gillum. Barry, it's down to the wire here in Supersport. Great job down there, Christy. Appreciate you so much, Christy Lee, or Christy Lee bringing us our top two that go for the championship. So, so we look at our starting lineup on the point. Number 68, Dustin Dominguez. Norman, Oklahoma is where he calls home. The HSBK racing team, he just saw a fellow Oklahoma guy win the Vance and Hines Harley-Davidson Series championship. Win a championship. He would like to do the same. And that is your pole setter. There's Tim Hunt right there. And... Um, and Leanne right there on the looking, looking great, getting ready to go. Dustin Dominguez, your pole setter, number 68, the HSBK racing team out of Norman, Oklahoma, your rider. Starting in the two spot, number 69, Hayden Gillum, TOBC Racing's where he calls home. He has got to finish second if Dominguez wins, but I know what Hayden Gillum's thinking he wants to win. The man who would be spoiler could be uh, the rider we're going to introduce now. Front row Joe here, 777 Mark Miller Jr., Rising Sun, Maryland's where he calls home. The Mardell Racing Yamaha, he could be a spoiler in this one big time. Second row, number 54, Richie Escalante out of Mexico on the Escalante Racing Yamaha. Starting in the fifth spot, Calistoga, California's Celtic HVMC Racing Suzuki, number 19, Wyatt Ferris. He's alongside his teammate. His teammate calls this track home. He's out of Carmel, New York for the Celtic team, number five, Corey Alexander. 
starting in the seventh spot. And I know he's happy to be up that far in this starting grid. Had a good race yesterday. Can he do it again? Number 71, Tim Hunt from Green Acres, Florida, the triple threat. Apex Race Service Yamaha. Alongside him, the, the youngster out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, number 51, Caleb DeCarroll. Starting ninth, number 623, J.C. Camacho on the Camacho Racing Yamaha. Let's step it up here a little bit and try to get a little deeper in this field before they roll. Starting 10th, number 94, Casey T Tobolowski. He got his license yesterday morning to race professionally. It was his birthday yesterday. He's 16. He's out of Flemington, New Jersey, racing at home. Lots of friends and family joining on Fans Choice and here on the Washington Cycle Works Service Pavilion, Yamaha Champions Riding School, Yamaha R6. Welcome to Pro Racing, Casey Tobolowski. Lusky, I believe it is. Starting 11th, 409, Christian Croslin out of Raleigh, North Carolina, the TOBC Racing Suzuki. 669 goes 12th. That's Isaiah Davis from Wood River Junction, Rhode Island, on the Evolution Racing Yamaha. Starting on row number five is number 96, Jason Aguilar, 180, Curtis Murray, and 89, Justin Jones. Row number six, the 16 of Nick McFadden, 31, Christopher Knopf. Uh, number 23, James Shepard. Moving to the seventh row, 19th starting spot for uh, Sunday Norway's ADR Motorsports entry, number 44, Carolina Olsen. Starting 20th, number 620, Carl Soltist. Starting in the 21st spot, number 184 is Jimmy Merck. 33, Connor Blevins goes off 22nd with Josh Galser, number, number 357, 23rd. It's Max Flinders starting in the 24th spot. Craig Miller, Joey Giannato, and Jeremy Simmons, your ninth row. Starting at 10th row is Zev Ginsburg, Gabe Oldfield, and Christopher Lilligard. In your 11th row, it is going to be Mitch Card, Cody Wyman, and Jay Newton, who I believe is the actual official oldest rider in the field. Starting in the 12th spot is Bart DeRosa, Felipe McLean, and CJ LaRoche. Your 13th row, Ryan Christian, Alexander Jabalt, and George Leticus. Starting in the 14th row, young lady from Fredericksburg, Virginia on the ADR Motorsports entry, 804 Patricia Fernandez, Andre Oaks, and Justin Miller. In your 15th row, Tim Wilson, Keith Culver, and Norman Pomerlau. Starting in the 16th row, Gillis Glidewell, Kurt Miller, and Stacey Nesbitt. And back on that 17th row, Ryan Haddock and John Foy. Why do we give every rider's name in the starting lineup? because this we can. This is fanschoice.tv, the riders we think deserve the recognition. So we take the time to go through the entire field. I'm turning to our color analyst for 2014, five-time Daytona winner, Scott Russell. Scott, you've got 50 great riders here. Maybe 15 of them could win the race. What's gonna happen? Well, anything can happen in this class that we've seen it before. You line this many riders up on a grid, send them down into turn one. This is a tight little racetrack. So uh, passing, you know, is, 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 is tough at some spots. But I tell you, it's going to be a really good race, and I'm looking forward to it. And the championship being on the line, that makes it more that more that much more exciting. Hayden Gillum and Dustin Dominguez, two fine young men trying to win themselves a national championship. Dustin Dominguez is going to have to win the race. That's all there is to it. Hayden can finish second and still win the championship. That's going to be fun to watch it all unfold. Well, this morning in the warm-up, uh, Dustin Dominguez really laid down some fast lap times. He was gutted yesterday when the race kind of got sh cut short. He felt like he had more in him. Um, today, you're going to see the best of Dustin Dominguez for sure. Hayden Gillum's just got to kind of ride with him so to speak, and just kind of stay close, and he'll win this championship, and, and it's a hard-earned one this year. So I, I look for uh, – I think Dustin's going to take off on this one. Okay, I think Hayden Gillum is going to put his head down. So we will find out at the end of the day who prevails. Both are fine young men. Both would make fine representatives and champions starting 2015. We'll find out. So your front row again, that's Dustin Dominguez, number 68, on the white, red, and green machine. That is a Yamaha R6. To his immediate right, the beautiful white with the uh, gold TOBC logo on the side, 
That is Philpott, Kentucky's Hayden Gillum. Yes, his first name is Hayden, uh, but he is actually first cousin to Nikki, Tommy, and Roger Hayden. Hayden Gillum on the middle of that uh, front row. And the possible spoiler, one of the possible spoilers, is a man who's ridden beautifully all weekend long, and that is Mark Miller, Jr., starting uh, outside of the front row. Beth Miller exits stage right. It's all in control of these riders now, and Supersport is underway. Gillum with a wheel stand, but looked like he may have the advantage. We'll see as they fan out going into turn number one. Gillum is going to lead them into one first time. Good move by Gillum. He needed to get off the line, and they want to get near the front. They didn't want to get mired in that pack. So the two championship contenders are right out there in the front where they need to be. Mark Miller right there in that third spot. He, he could be the spoiler, like you said. He's on fire this weekend, really happy this morning when I talked to him and excited about today's race. If Dustin Dominguez wins and Miller finishes second and Hayden Gillum finishes third, championship Dominguez. We'll find out. It's going to happen. This race is 16 laps long. What a difference again that a day makes. Yesterday, Scott, it was a deluge. These guys were on a wet racetrack at a shortened race. Today, beautiful sunshine here in New Jersey. There's no excuses today. Today, it's all out. It's good track condition. Dunlop tires ought to be working pretty good out there today. And, um, you know, it's just going to be one of those days where Dustin Dominguez is going to have to pull out all the stops. Hayden Gillum's got to cover whatever move he makes. But right now, Hayden's in control um, with uh, that gap growing between those two riders and the rest of the pack already. Okay, this is storybook right here. The men going at this national championship are beginning to separate themselves just a little bit at this time here in the early going from Mark Miller Jr. Dominguez shadowing Hayden Gillum. Scott Russell, you won the 750 World Superbike Championship. So you and you've won several big races, including five Daytonas. To my way of thinking, you can't ask for more than to be healthy, have a great motorcycle, and great weather to compete in the final race for the championship. Exactly, and I've been in this situation, and I've come out the loser, you know. So it's not a good feeling to come out sec second in the world championship. But I mean, um, this today is, is, is going to be. These two riders have fair, come very close to winning this championship on their own in the last couple of years. So they've both come up short. Um, there's only going to be one winner right now, and it looks like Dustin Dominguez is going to go down the inside as they go down into turn six right now. Hayden chops the front end off. He says, not today, man. This is going to be a battle. I've heard you say many times when someone makes a call like that, you've got to answer back immediately, and that's what he just did. Hayden said, no way. I'm still a race leader right now, not wanting to relinquish control of the super sport race as Hayden Gillum out front. Dustin had a moment. He the rear lost the rear of the motorcycle. He was up off the seat pretty good. When you go into turn eight like that and turn it in and get back to the throttle, there's been a lot of guys out of the saddle this weekend. I've seen it. It's just a lot. Long duration corner with a lot of lean angle. And they're trying to get real aggressive with the throttle. These tires are new. But that, that jumped him out of the saddle right there. He'll note that down. He's not really worried about it or shaking up at all. He's worrying about turn one right now, trying to get by Hayden Gillum. Well, Scott, I'm watching Dustin Dominguez looking about as composed as I've seen him look all year long. He is stalking Hayden, working him so hard right there in the draft. And Dustin looks to me as like he's got the speed to definitely get it done here uh, today. In fact, right now he's got the fast lap of the race at 125.512. Oh, yeah, but Rick Matheny's now put a tune up on that Suzuki out front and, that, and Hayden Gillum wants to win this championship by winning the race today and after watching what Josh Hayes did yesterday fighting for that victory winning the championship uh, well he didn't get the victory in the end but anyway that's how they want to go out you want to go out on top he doesn't want to lay down and just let this this guy Dominguez run away from him um, he wants to fight for the win and the championship Okay, let's remind everybody that it's really early. Uh, 14 laps remain in this 16-lap affair. Right now, the top two have a pretty good lead over Mark Miller, Jr., who's got a pretty nice lead over uh, Corey Alexander. It would only take a red or a little situation to bring all this thing back together, but right now there's a little bit of poetic justice to it. Gillum and Dominguez up front battling it out, trying to win themselves a championship as we got a little bit of a look back through the field. But it seems to me Hayden wants to control the pace of the race right now. Yeah, I think he's happy doing what he's doing right now. Uh, like I said, he didn't want to let Dustin just kind of go and then ride behind him. Uh, he feels like I could win this thing. So he's really got his head down. He's going to fight Dustin tooth and nail, looks like, to the end. We'll see how that plays out as the race goes on. Well, Hayden got a real good drive out of the final corner and actually got for the first time 
actually had about a six bike length advantage over Dominguez. I don't think Dominguez is going to want to give Hayden any opportunity because I tell you, uh, if you give him an inch of daylight, he'll leave you in the dark, Hayden Gillum will. Well, I tell you, he's, he's dropped the lap time, just cut the fastest lap of the race at a 125.3. That's, that's smoking today. And, uh, you know, that's, a, that's the same kind of time that uh, Dominguez did this morning in practice, which is really quick. So these two guys are doing it. Martin Miller's doing a great job in third. And Corey Alexander's trying to find his way finally back in fourth spot. Dominguez trying it at the same place on the racetrack that he did before. Hayden tried to answer that call and did. Nicely done. That's, that's a great passing zone when you get down into turn six. You let the bike swing out of turn five and you just kind of carry that momentum down. That puts you on the inside for turn six. But he wasn't able to close the deal either time he's tried it. Hayden's run some real defensive lines as they go through turn eight, nine, ten area, long duration right hand corner. Um, he's really did a good job to cover that inside. You've got a lot of laps here on this racetrack uh, between racing and the Yamaha Champions Riding School you'll be doing next week. Um, Scott, where, where other places, what are some of the other locations on this racetrack that Dustin might be thinking about trying that move? Well, the premier place is down here, right down at the end of the straight. If you can get a good run out of that straight, out of that last corner like he has, and then it's a braking duel right now, but Hayden's out on the outside. He's deep on the brakes right now. That's, he's not going to let that happen. Otherwise, that's going to bring us back to turn six where Dustin keeps trying to make that move, Barry. Now, I'm certain he's going to line him up and give it another shot as they come at it. But those two areas of the racetrack, probably the best places to pass. Well, he's still got a lot of laps left to practice that move and to try to time that move. I'm thinking it's important that you set it up right to begin the move maybe a little quicker. And here it comes right here. This is the area where he swings out. Now he's down in there deep. Can he make it happen? And now he runs it in there. The good part about that is he was able to hold that tight line and make the move and make it stick. So... The uh, man who was running in the two spot, the chaser, if you will, has become the chasee. As he has come to the head of the class, we, if he makes it back to the stripe, we will have a new official race leader here in the form of Norman Oklahoma's uh, Dustin Dominguez. Now Hayden Gillum gets to maybe show a little bit of patience. It, could it be an opportunity for Hayden now to at least watch Dustin and see where he's strong and see where he is weak? Oh, yeah, it's always that, that opportunity when you're rolling right behind a rider, but I don't think he's going to sit there. He wants to go out on top. I think you're going to see another move down here into turn one, although Dustin's got the inside line. Now he dives down to the inside, Hayden, down on the brakes hard. Got that thing back then, but Dustin really deep and did a great job of holding him off. In the AMA Pro Grand National Championship Series, my other Scott partner, Scotty Dubler, would call that a shutoff contest. And uh, Dustin Dominguez won the shutoff contest that time. But I have a feeling he is going to be tested again and again and again. When they cross the stripe, it'll be 10 to go. That is 10 more times to try it in turn one, perhaps 10 more times to try it over in six. And a lot of time and distance left for either one of these riders to make a tiny mistake that could turn into a huge one for them with championship implications on the line. Yeah, that's the thing Hayden doesn't want to get suckered into a, a real dogfight too much. Um, he doesn't need to win this thing to win the championship. So uh, is Dustin trying to, to get him to fight like that? Obviously, yeah. He would love for him to get in a real battle and maybe something happen to Hayden, you know, uh, push him into making a mistake like that. But... Uh, really, all, all he can do now is just kind of stay with him and, and, and shadow him and, and hope that, uh, that he stays on the bike and, and wins this championship. Dustin, he's going to want to win the race. That's all he can do at this point. And that is why you are the best color analyst with a microphone I personally have ever heard. That is so true. Dustin right now is probably doing exactly that. He is trying to goad Hayden Gillum into a dogfight here. Hayden hopefully is smart enough and, and cagey enough to know I don't have to do this right now. That's right. Here we get another look at back in the pack, and there's our little buddy Caleb DeCarroll. Look at him go. He's really finding his way again. He struggled all weekend, but now he's up in that fifth spot running a great race. Back over here to the leaders, and they go into the chicane. And here, White Ferris as well. He's closed the gap down. He's riding well this weekend. Corey Alexander's right there too, Barry. And leading that group is Mark Miller, Jr., who has had a stellar weekend here at the Kawasaki Devil Showdown. 
presented by Ion. That is the battle for third right there. So podium on the line. You've got Mark Miller Jr. in the three spot, Wyatt Ferris running fourth, Caleb DeCarroll fifth, and back there with a good look of that is the Celtic Racing's number five, Corey Alexander, and DeCarroll looks like he is ready uh, to take that spot away. For me, Caleb's the, the best young rider this series has had this year. I think he's uh, really come into his own. He's been on the box at Elkhart Lake a couple times, and he's really a great kid. And this is the kind of guy that, 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 that one of these big teams need to wrap up and get a hold of him at a young age. I think this kid's got so much potential. Look at him running with these, with these regulars in this class now like he belongs up front. Um, so I hope. I hope down the road here, if somebody's going to give him a ride and, and, and propel him up to the front of this, this field. As Hayden Gillum tries that draft move, it's a drag race into turn number one. And again, Dominguez has the measure of Gillum under braking. Hayden Gillum will now look once again. Oh, Hayden is definitely not content to ride in the second spot. He, he knows he doesn't have to win the race. He simply wants to. Back to DeCarroll for a moment. Uh, one thing about Caleb that I always appreciate, he's not grumpy. But when you walk up to him after an event, you go, congratulations on third. He says, it's just not good enough. I think I could have done better. He's always driving himself on to be better. Well, anything, if you're a real racer, winning's the only thing. Second's like kissing your sister. Third's even worse. One year after Nikki Hayden lost uh, the Daytona 200 by about an inch and one of the, one of the close finishes in that sport, I called Earl uh, the following day, and I said, Earl, congratulations on a great finish. He said, who finished second in the Super Bowl last year? I said, I don't know. Who was second in the World Series last year? I don't know. And it's like, point well taken. Uh, it's winning is what it's all about in this sport and every other sport. So great battles all over this racetrack right now. We're watching that one with Caleb DeCarroll, that beautiful orange, white, and yellow number 51 seriously pressuring but now we're back up at the lead group and it Dustin Dominguez having a perfect day doing what he needs to do Hayden tries to a look down the inside under braking now goes to the high side perhaps trying to set him up for that left-hander two good battles is. right there yep. that, these are all podium implications and championship implications yep Caleb picks up another spot as he outbreaks Wyatt Ferris down into turn one Wyatt's really riding well this weekend too uh, take anything away from him, his teammate right there, Corey, finally finally getting something going this weekend, not where he wanted to be. That kid started out this year on fire, and uh, somewhere along the way the fire got put out, and now he's, he's trying to rekindle that thing. And uh, But these two guys up here, the fire's burning bright up here up front. I almost wonder if Hayden Gillum is not trying to lull Dominguez into a false sense of security right now. He's laying back about three bike lengths. I think he could be pressuring, and he's really not. Perhaps he's trying to kind of nurse those Dunlops a little, though that has not been an issue. You know, we were talking about that battle with Ferris, Alexander, and DeCarroll. White Ferris is third in points. Only three points behind him is Corey Alexander, and uh, just about 16 points behind him is Caleb DeCarroll. So those guys are really racing for outcomes on their season right now back there in that battle for third. Yeah, and Alexander's got fastest lap of the race, too, so uh, he's really starting to, to gather it together this weekend. A little bit late, but uh, these two guys here are setting the pace up and running 125s the whole race long, so they're setting a really fast pace, and uh, really there's no challengers from those guys behind. Like you said, I think Hayden's just kind of playing around with him, to be honest with you. He's riding up on the outside. He's on the inside. It's like uh, I think there's going to be another move, and wow, there it is. Nice little inside move. <clears throat> Dominguez will answer the call on the inside of the left-hander. Gillum goes to the outside on the right-hander. And if you think these two are not going at it for a national championship, you got another thing coming. Both fine young men, they both have their game face on right now. Well, they both split that slower rider. And this is, you know, where they got to be careful, you know, because anything can happen when you're racing this hard with another rider. If something happens, Gillum wins the championship because he is leading it right now between these two. All right, let's throw it down trackside. Christy Lee has Rick Matheny, Hayden Gillum's crew chief. Rick, we've had this microphone in your face all day long. Big day for you and, of course, for Hayden Gillum. And what a battle royale it is between him and Dustin Dominguez right now during this race for the championship. Yeah, I think they're sizing each other up right now, trying to see where the one's faster than the other. Um, 
Hayden's taking big sweeping lines. Dustin's being a little defensive. It's what, exactly what we expected to see. And I'm glad, you know, they're, they've pulled away, but now we're into lappers, and this is where it can get sketchy. Absolutely, with only a few laps left. Kind of what's going through your head right now with the championship on the line? About a zillion things. I'm as nervous as a cat right now. Just the way we'll, I let, am. <laughs> we'll let you get back to it. Rick Matheny, crew chief for Hayden Gillum. Barry, back to you. Thanks so much, Christy. Wow, Scott, I want your thoughts on all of that. Oh, yeah, you know, Rick's down there biting his fingernails, I guarantee you. But And, and, and with good cause, because Hayden's all over the place, out on the on the outside. He's out there right, almost in the dirt, coming on the front straightaway. Pretty amazing run by this kid. It's like the championship probably doesn't – he's riding like it's not even a thought. You know, he's just riding for a race win. And uh, it's fun to see two guys going at it like this. I love to end the season like this. Well, really, the only real pressure on Hayden Gillum right now is don't crash. Stay up because he's in a spot right now. If they finish this way, he wins the championship. So, Scott, the guy that's under, and really there's probably not any pressure on Dominguez either. He's just got to win the race. That's all. You're right. I mean, they're kind of just letting it hang, you know, and, not, and I like that, you know. So, Hayden's proven that he can get back by him if he wants to. Uh, now maybe he'll kind of lay out a little bit and just kind of ride with him. Oh, uh, I see a waving yellow. I We've got, I saw a waving yellow over on that part of the racetrack just uh, as they were going by it. All right, let's throw it down, track side, Christy Lee. I believe it's the 42 that's, uh, I'm getting a report that uh, George Latakis uh, is the rider that's down over in that uh, section of the racetrack with that waving yellow. Of course, they all the riders know there's no passing during a waving yellow can't be done when you're in that part of the racetrack. So it's still the 68 of Dustin Dominguez. with uh, Hayden Gillum in hot pursuit. Now we go back to that strong little battle right there. So with that, let's throw it down track side with Christy Lee, who's staying right on top of this championship battle. Thanks, Barry. Just ran down to Dustin Dominguez's pit after coming from Hayden Gillum's pit with crew chief Ronnie Sainer. It's a lot going on out on the racetrack between these two guys right now. I know there's some nerves over there at the TOBC or racing team. What about you? Uh, I don't think nerves. We're just uh, going to sit here and see what they do. You know, Our job's done. It's all up to the kid now, right? So being nervous ain't going to help. So we're just going to sit and watch, and we'll see what happens. Just calm, cool, and collected watching this race. <laughs> What else can you do? I love it. Definitely a different demeanor down here. Barry, we'll throw it back up to you. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you, Christy. Yeah, you know what? There's a rider on the ground right there. It's uh, one of the Red Bull, the uh, one of the Danny Walker's guys on the ground. That's me, Tomas Porta. That's tough right there. Tomas, number 12, Medellin, Columbia rider. And he's down in that turn three, four area. That chicane is where he's bought it at over there. He looks like he's a little banged up. But uh, doing good. It has definitely been a um, quite an amazing event. It's a standing yellow now, I believe, that they've got in that part of the racetrack, meaning just caution. Well, I looked there for a moment. All I could see uh, is Dustin Dominguez in that camera shot. That means that he is beginning to put a little bit of a gap on Hayden Gillum. Oh, that, that's another rider down right there. And that's in the turn one area right there. I didn't quite. I wasn't quite able to make out the number on that on that bike, Scott. Yeah, no, difficult. What one of our leaders? Though. We know that. So they're they're both running together right now. After a, a little bit of a layoff right there, they got some lap riders in between Dustin and Hayden Gillum. But Hayden's now starting to close that that gap back up, across the line now, Barry. We only got three laps left, so it's uh it's gonna heat up here in a minute. We're gonna find out soon how this is going to go down. Well, it will either will or it won't. It could be that Dominguez has the measure of Hayden right now as Tomas Puerta. No, that's not Tomas. As uh, 
Anyway, the rider limps off of the racetrack, but really it looks as if perhaps there's one of two things, either Hayden Gillum is laying back, being cool on purpose, or Dominguez has just gapped him a little bit. Uh, I, I, like you, believe we're going to have fireworks before it's over. It'll be two to go when they get back to the finish line. We had some uh, we had some lap riders get in between them is what happened a couple laps back, and that's what gave that gap. And now Hayden's got nothing but clear track, and he's, he's starting to reel that back in. He's going to have to just be smooth and hit all of his marks because these two are so evenly matched right now. Dustin Dominguez does own the fast lap of the race, one, two, five. 184 to Hayden Gillum's 125282. Two. That's how they're stacking up here. But you're right, he is beginning to slowly, carefully reel him in. When they get back to the stripe, it'll be two to go this time. I, that was not Tomas Porta that crashed. It was number 49, Philippe McLean, who does ride the Road Race Factory Red Bull. Um, Felipe McLean, and he it. limped off the racetrack, uh, perhaps just a little bit of a slight. Uh, injury of some sort. Here we go, We're down in the turn three and four area right now. They're gonna come up on some lap traffic and this could play a part in this right now. I think it shouldn't be any problem really though. As they sweep, they split the rider as they go over the top of the hill, diving into turn five right now and hard breaking zone into turn six. This is Dominguez's favorite corner for passing. And Hayden Gillum decides he's just going to sit up on the high side, let the bike roll through there. Still no pressure from him. He's putting the pressure on Dominguez. Dominguez probably isn't feeling it. He's just out there trying to win the race right now. As they sweep through into turn eight, this long duration corner right here really taxes those Dunlop tires. Guys are trying to really accelerate hard through there, and it's a difficult braking zone because you're really leaned over. It's hard to find the apex at that corner, but they both do a great job, have done all day long. Now they sweep through this, this long left-hand corner. This leads them into a section of S turns, which really, really makes the rider work hard, pushing and pulling on the handlebars flat out as they come through the last corner onto the front straightaway on turn 14. Flat across the start finish line. And now we just got a lap to go. Barry. They're showing them a blue flag and a white here to get some of these slower riders up out of the way. The championship battle on the line. White flag is in the air. Dustin Dominguez doing all that he can do right now to win this championship, Scott. He is leading Hayden Gillum. The question is, is Hayden going to take a chance? He sure loves to win a race as much as anybody. I think if the door opens wide enough, he'll try it. I don't know that he'll push the issue at this point. I think it would be silly to. He's got this thing in the back. Just bring it home. We got half a track left to, to wrap up, and it's been a great season for both these riders. Dustin Dominguez, the pride of Norman, Oklahoma. You got to, This is one of those cases where you would love for two guys to be able to win a championship, but that's not how it works in this life. One rider is going to take home and receive from Joe Bromley with the American Motorcyclist Association a number one plate. It'll be something he will cherish for the rest of his life. Nothing like that first major national championship. And Hayden Gillum wants it. Dominguez wants it. They're working this place for the final time. Hayden Gillum either being patient or Dominguez has really wicked it up here in the closing moments. I think he thought maybe I'll try something down here at the end of not, at turn 10. It wasn't there. He falls back in line. He's going to win this championship after one more turn here, Barry. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen, out of the final corner for the final time. Dustin Dominguez will make that one move. It was just enough to keep it from happening. And there is your race winner, Dustin Dominguez, who's probably a little bit heartbroken right now, but the man who has finished third three years in a row. Last year, Hayden Gillum lost this title by one point. No one in this sport will ever forget how gracious he was in defeat. He lost by a point, yet he stood there and said, racing against these guys has been a thrill of a lifetime for me. Yes, I came up a little short. I'm thankful to have these great competitors. I lost by a point, but it's still a victory for me. And uh, now he has done it. And it's said, Scott, you've got to lose some close ones uh, to appreciate winning one, that he's going to appreciate this. Oh, yeah, he's going to he's gonna relish this for all year long, until, or off season until we come back next year. And Dominguez, will, he'll be uh, – He'll be a little bit disappointed for sure, but he's got to be happy. He rode like a champion today. He brought it home in, in that first, first place spot. So 
Um, like I said, only one guy could win the championship at the end, but it was a great championship battle, and it needed to come down like that. As a matter of fact, I was there at uh, Virginia International Raceway uh, for the uh, – Road Race Amateur National Championship, and Hayden Gillum won the Horizon Award. AMA, I tell you what, over time, when you look down the Horizon Award winners in flat track and road race, they know how to pick the rider with the most potential as a future pro champion. Yeah, they got it right again, and look at him. He closed the deal today, and, uh, man, it's going to be a celebration tonight for that crew. It really is. You know, he's uh, he, he did a nice job for the Road Race Factory for Danny Walker's guys, did Hayden Gillum. And it, it really, though, as it, this championship belongs to two people and the whole team, really. But you got to give a call to Rick Matheny here. I mean, Rick has believed in Hayden for the last two or three seasons, and he's really put his heart and soul into giving him the best bike he could afford to give him. Yeah, I mean, Rick has been working 14-hour uh, days, he said, and, and just it's just been a, a long year for, for them. Um, lost Rob and Holly on the crew for a while, so had to do a lot of it on his own. Uh, they got Vic Fasola down in there uh, uh, the last week helping them prepare for it, and uh, it's paid off, you know, and uh, the TOBC team, a great crew down there. They have a lot of fun. They said it's a great atmosphere to be a part of, and Hayden found a nice home there, and he brought that championship home to that to a, a fairly new team in the AMA, and uh, congratulations to the team and to uh, Hayden. Classy team at that, and there's Dustin Dominguez right there. He has won Super Sport at the Kawasaki Devils Showdown, presented by Ion. There's the 19, there's Wyatt Ferris. He's your third place finisher, nearly lost in the shuffle for the championship, but hats off to Wyatt, number 19. Uh, he was third in points coming into this round, uh, and a great finish here uh, today earning a podium uh, did Wyatt uh, Ferris for the Celtic HVMC guys. I know uh, at home, uh, I don't know where Ashton Dominguez is. I'm sure she's celebrating and very, very happy. His wife, who he always mentions in every interview that he does, Dustin always talks about his wife. There he is. There she is right there, their, their son. Happy moment. Congratulations to the whole family. There's John Boucher, next moto champion giving him a big uh, big congratulations to Dustin for a job well done. Houston Superbike, what a great team of individuals that is right there. Houston Superbike, great team. Won the race today, lost the war. Won the battle, lost the war. And uh, Christy Lee is getting set to go down at podium. I'm really looking forward to this victory podium. And she is going to begin with our third place finisher. Going to start with Wyatt Ferris, who rode brilliantly today. Christy Lee with Wyatt Ferris. Thank you, Barry. Wyatt, obviously yesterday a difficult day for you, having some problems not only mechanically but with the bike as well. But congratulations on your third place finish today. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, kind of a crazy race. Dustin and uh, I can't even think right now, but they got away from me and uh, kind of Hayden. Thank you. Um, haven't really spent too much time on the harder tire and just didn't really get to grips with it soon enough and they got away but uh it's good to get up here finish the year in third um third on the box today and can't thank my boys at celtic hvmc enough suzuki yoshimira john block group Shoei cortec all those guys for making this happen for me this year and putting somewhat of a solid year together Congrats to our third place finisher, number 19, Wyatt Ferris. We'll move on over here and see if we can capture the attention of our first place finisher in today's race. We're looking, of course, for the number 68 of Dustin Dominguez. Dustin, great race, great season for you. You got a first place finish today. I'm sure it's not exactly what you were looking for, but you have to be proud of that outstanding racing today. Congratulations. Yeah, you know, it was a great race. Uh... It's kind of the most disappointing win I've ever had. I lost a championship, but uh, it was a good race, you know. Uh, Hayden was right there the whole time, and I, I followed him the first half, just trying to push him, maybe make a mistake, maybe make a mistake, and then uh, he just never did. He just rode an awesome race, so I decided to pick it up a little bit and uh, bring it home for a win, end the season off good, but I just can't thank uh, the whole team enough. I mean, they've been busting their butts all year long, and uh, uh, gave me a bike that could have been the championship winning bike so I uh, can't thank them enough and 
all my family, everybody watching, uh, my beautiful wife, and my awesome son here. He's excited to be at the races, but uh, I just got to give all the glory to God, and thanks for all the fans for showing up. And thanks. Number 68, Dustin Dominguez. That's today's race winner. But, of course, we're going to talk to our second-place finisher and our brand-new champion as well, number 69, Hayden Gillum. Hayden, that was a battle royale. You got a second-place finish, but I know what's on your mind right now is not that. It's the championship. Congratulations on a great race and an outstanding season. Oh, thanks so much. You know, the last three years I finished short. And, uh, you know, to finally come out here, and battle for wins every weekend and battle with Dustin and Corey and White and you know everybody out there it's it's fantastic I'm so happy to finally get the number one on the bike though uh, you know team TOBC I can't thank them enough John and Scott and Frank and you know just everybody on the team I, I can't thank them enough for giving me the opportunity Rick Matheny's worked his butt off all year my dad's worked his butt off you know I can't thank anybody more than my family you know they've been supporting me through the thick and thin and if I wouldn't be here without them. Today's second place finisher in Super Sport. We'll hear more from the champion when we head to the podium. Barry, I'll go back up to you for now and we'll get things ready for our podium ceremonies. Thank you, Christy Lee. Great job. Gotta say congratulations once again to Hayden Gillum. He has won the national championship in a one-to-one -one, man to man battle of the final lap of the final race of the 2014 season. And that man right there finally can say he is the national champion after coming up short three years in a row. There's his dad behind him, Big Frank. So let's do it. Let's throw it down to Christy Lee for our official, official victory, victory podium, podium celebration, celebration for the Kawasaki, Kawasaki Devil, Showdown Devil Showdown presented by Ion for Super Sport. Here's Christy. Barry, thank you once again as always. And of course, we have to give a shout out to all of the fans here this afternoon at New Jersey Motorsports Park and all the fans back at home on fanschoice.tv watching us in all of our outstanding racing this weekend. Let's get things underway for our AMA Pro Super Sport podium race number two here at NJMP, bringing up our third place finisher this afternoon on the Celtic Racing Machine. That's number 19 of Wyatt Ferris. Come on, guys, give it up for him. Wyatt, big way to finish the season. Uh, great race out there today. Tell us about it. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Hayden and, uh, again, Dustin got away from me, and uh, I just didn't have the pace in the first few laps. Um, but I can't thank my team enough. To finish the weekend up here after yesterday, you know, two top fives and a third, it's not too bad, and I'm looking forward to the future. But I really got to thank everyone that's made this year happen for me. It's uh, not possible without the Celtic HVNC crew over here. Those guys worked their butt off. K-Tech and Chris Nasher for trying to make me as much comfortable as I can be on this thing. Yoshimira. Uh, John Block Group, Cortex, Showy, all the other team sponsors, and all the people for coming out here. It's uh, it's nice to have my mom here too. It's the first one of the season, so I'm on the box. Congratulations once again to our third place finisher this afternoon, and again from AMA Racing, the American Motorcyclist Association, to present today's third place trophy is Joe Bromley. Joe, any words for Wyatt and the team? Uh, just an outstanding season and outstanding race here today in the Super Sport class. Excellent. Please give it up one last time for our third place finisher, number 19 of Wyatt Ferris. Now let's bring up our second place finisher this afternoon in Super Sport. That's the number 68 of Dustin Dominguez on his HSVK racing machine. Dustin, come on up here. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Your second place finisher, Hayden Gillum, number 69 on his TOBC racing machine. My apologies. Hayden, come on up here. It's been one heck of a weekend. Aiden, I'm so sorry about that. Second place finish, and now, of course, our new national champion within Supersport. Great season for you. You couldn't have asked for a better race to win that championship because you fought hard for it. Yeah, you know, this last race, uh, I was just I was just hoping to keep up with Dustin going into it. And, you know, once we got going, uh, the adrenaline got pumping, and I was just, I was just wanting it. But, oh, my God, the two of us were just fighting the entire race. I had him in some spots. He had me in others. And, Oh, man, it was just insane to end the season like that. It was just like last year. One point's the difference. Uh, you know, 
he's he did fantastic this year. I wish Corey could have been up here with us too, fighting for the championship. But you know, to be able to battle like this at the final race, I can't I can't thank everybody enough. You know, TOBC Racing, Bell Helmets, Cortec Leather, CD Boots, Scott Bicycles, uh, Cycle World. Uh, you know, just. Everybody that's helping me, I can't thank them enough. You know, Rick Matheny had the GSXR 600 running great all year, and uh, finally, finally. <laughs> Here to present our second place trophy this afternoon, again, Joe Bromley from the AMA. Joe, any words on this second place finish? I'm sure you have more words when you have more hardware later, but any words on the second place finish today? It's just a smart race, just uh, took the second place to take the championship, so congratulations here for a season. Congratulations once again to our second place finisher. That would be number 69 of Hayden Gillum. Please give it up for him. Now let's bring up our race winner today. Our race winner. I've got it right this time. I promise, boss. Let's bring up number 68 of Dustin Dominguez on his HSBK racing machine. Dustin, I have the same thing to say to you as I said to Hayden. You guys fought hard. You got the win today. It wasn't the championship, but, man, it was good all around. Congratulations on the race win. Yeah, thanks. It was a good day in the year with the win. I just uh, can't thank the team enough. I mean, they gave me a bike that was awesome all year long, and uh, I just couldn't do it for them. But uh, congratulations to Hayden. I mean, he's rode awesome, had a perfect season all year long, and uh, he deserves to win this championship. And uh, I just can't thank everybody that's helped me out even just over my career it's just awesome to be able to come here and uh, ride a motorcycle it's pretty cool and uh, my beautiful wife and son it's cool to have them and uh, just got to thank all the fans for being here I mean you guys are what gives us jobs so uh, keep buying stuff and keep coming to the races <laughs> once again to present the first place trophy this afternoon Joe Bromley from AMA Joe any words again for Dustin and his team yeah Dustin I uh, did a great job uh, you did what you had to do to win the race and uh, Hayden just uh, hung there with you to take the championship a great job to you and your uh, uh, team and uh, congratulations on a great season Excellent. Thank you. There's your top three on the podium in race number two for Supersport. Give it up one last time. We do have some more hardware to present. Let's go ahead and do the hardware before we do the hat dance. Once again, to present the number one trophy from the American Motorcyclist Association in Ohio is Joe Bromley here to present the number one plate for our brand new 2014 national champion. Let's give it up for the number 69, now the number one of Hayden Gillum. Joe, any words for Hayden? I know you've got plenty. Yeah, Hayden, congratulations. It gives me a great honor to be here. Back in 2010, I had the opportunity to present you the AMA Horizon Award uh, Championship, uh, uh, Horizon Award. And uh, it gives me great pleasure because it goes to show that you were one of our top amateur riders there. You moved into the pro ranks and then here today taking the championship on the uh, Super Sport Championship. So on behalf of the American Motorcycles Association, I'd like to present you the 2014 Super Sport National Championship number one plate. Congratulations. Thank you. Hayden, any words? Just ready to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah, he's ready. All right, guys, let's bring up once again from Kawasaki, the regional manager, Jennifer Top, to present our hats this afternoon. Of course, the official tire of AMA Pro Road Racing is Dunlop, and the official fuel is Sunoco. And we'd like to thank New Jersey Motorsports Park for allowing us to race at this beautiful facility year after year. One last time, guys, for our top three finishers and our brand-new national champion here in race number two, New Jersey Motorsports Park with Supersport. That will wrap up our victory podium. Barry, we'll turn it back up to you in the towel.